B1 brothers and sisters, welcome to Black Logic. And this is part two of those black boot licking organizations that do nothing for black people, but they pretend, they portray. And every time I think, you know, every two and four years, I believe that we fall for this trick and we know that it's a trick, but we, we feel the obligation that we just need to vote for somebody, right? We've been fighting so long. We have the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that we should just be, oh, we should just run to the voting booths. That's the way that we think about it is in our family. Because when we look at these organizations are draped in the guise of representing the interests of the black community, having become nothing more than puppets to the Democratic Party. They've mastered the art of deception, cunningly manipulating black voters to serve their own agendas while leaving the community that they claim to champion in the dust. The black boot licking NAACP. And no, no, the one I dislike the most, the congressional black butt kissers. I absolutely, I disguise them the, I disguise them the most because they're the most organization that has the power. See, even if we took a closer look at, you know, the uh, NAACP, right? Once was a beacon of hope for civil rights, especially during the Dr. King era until it's a shell of his former self. It's not even a shell. It's kind of like a think tank to coerce black folk to continue to be Democrats, claim themselves to be Democrats. That's what I believe. And all the while neglecting its constituents, its people. See, when we say constituents, it's like a separation of a people. It's kind of like we're just people who garnish a vote that have a vote. And some people don't understand how powerful their vote is, right? That's why they got other Democratic Shield organizations like Black Voters Matter. We're going to talk about it, family. I, like I told you before, I, I listen to your comments, I look at your comments, and it inspires me, it motivates me. And every now and again, I miss a couple of things, but that's okay. We can't cover it all. Well, we could. <laughs> You know, organizations like the National Urban League, all these organizations, all these black democratic funded organizations, um, when they were first founded, they were empowering to a certain degree. And now they have just devolved themselves into a mouthpiece for the Democratic Party because they're quick to condemn any dissenting voices in the black community. Don't you don't you say nothing about Joe Biden? Don't you say about Kamala Harris, the sister girl or Asian? Whatever she want to be at the time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But don't you say nothing about those people. Don't say nothing about Roly Poly Martin, who's a Democratic Shield organization, by the way, of the Black Star. Let's not forget that. OK, let's not forget that. But see, we tend to kind of get on the bandwagon of people that sound good, but they don't prevent the truth. Have you noticed in the new black media that we present the truth? We give you their words. We give you their legislation. We give you their pop pieces. We give you their video clips. We give you everything that you would need in order to understand that we're being tricked and duped each and every time. See, none of this information, none of these uh, uh, boot kissers get on TV and talk to black folk about anything except during the voting time, every two to four years, whether it be local, state or federal. That's what, the only time you hear from these people. People come knocking on your door, sister, you need anything? Brother, are you okay? Is there anything we can do for you? Oh, uh, well, you know, um, this pothole has been in a row for two years. We'll take care of it. But you know, in order for us to take care of it, you have to vote. X mark the spot. You have to vote that person in. Then when they get in office, then we can fix that. And what do, what do we do? We go out and we, we're charged up. We got our little voting buttons is shining, it's brown. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we about to go vote. We about to go vote. Yeah, I, did you vote today? Oh, I voted today. Everybody's pumped up and motivated. Everybody is energized and ready to go. And when we vote, what do we say? Damn, that pothole's still there. After all this damn time. But going back to the Congressional Black Caucus family, they parade around as champions for the black representation in Congress. 
And I showed you you guys their website yesterday. And it had Afri African-American and other marginalized communities. Then it also states something about minority businesses. Go reference it. Go reference the CBC website. Then I want you to correlate, compare, contrast, and look at the Hispanic Congressional Caucus and the Asian Congressional Caucus. These other so-called minority groups do not mention underserved communities, marginalized communities, uh, uh, minority businesses. They don't name anything like that. You know what they do name, though? They name Hispanic all throughout their verbiage, all throughout their text, just as well as the Asians. They don't name none other of those trick words that they use when it comes to black folk. And you can continue like, why would these people that are in these positions of power and influence, why would they continue to trick their own people? Why would they continue to suppress and help their own people? That's what you're probably asking yourself. Money. Money, family. Stinking money. It's all about money. It's, it's always been about money. America was built on blood money, on slave money. It's about money. That's what all of this is about. So YouTube, you can keep sharing the revenue, striking the video, but I'm going to keep going till you shut me down. I'm just going to let you know, YouTube. So stop trying to flag my videos. <laughs> Good old YouTube. But this is the problem, family. We got people who speak conjecture and rhetoric and they tend to gear with a certain mindset or perspective. And then when I give the truth, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me because they champion themselves at these things. And it's about money. It's about them living a great life of power and influence and doing all the things that you wish you can do. The only thing that they have to do is sell out 49.5 million people because we're 50 million strong and growing but you always got about 500,000 people that are in positions of influence and power that would try to deter black folk from freeing their mind and looking at the information subjectively subjectively but you should be looking at the information objectively this is how they get away with all this legislation and tax codes and you name it family, they do it. You name it family, they do it. This is how they get by. We got to call these things out. We have organizations like the uh, immigration equality that's under the democratic ticket. While see, while black Americans struggle to make ends meet, to, put food on the table, to have jobs, to shower. The, the basic benefits of life. What have the Democratic so-called party done for us and for our vote? It's a slap in the face to every single black person out there that voted Democrat. And it's a slap in the face if those same people go out and garnish their vote. Black Logic, are you saying vote for the Republicans? Are you saying vote for Trump? Democracy is at stake here. Democracy is at stake. <laughs> and as uh, my non-black subscribers, it's not just about black people, Black Logic. It's about the American citizens. And you're right. And you're right. But this is for black empowerment. So uh, stay with us or get off the chain. Stay with us or get off the chain. But I promise you, if you stay on this channel, you're going to learn something that you probably would have never learned anywhere else. I promise you that. So no matter how much you non-foundational black Americans disagree with me, stay right here and get this good information so you can argue about it later with somebody who has the same mindset as me. It'd be a great conversation. I promise you. I promise you'd be a great conversation. So... A lot of people, before we really get into it, what is the solution? The black community, are we reclaiming our power and holding these organizations accountable? Because we can no longer, we can no longer afford 
to be dismissed the way we've been dismissed. And just like any family on this broadcast, we're going to give honor and respect to one of our great inventors. I believe that this brother is still alive. Honor and respect to Emmick McHenry. I told you guys about him just the other day. I told you about this guy just the other day. And what did they state it here, family? What did he create? The internet created a whole new world of digital possibilities. Emmett McHenry created the internet. Let me go down here a little bit. It wasn't until Emmett McHenry created a complex code which allowed any person the ability to search the internet and use email services without having to study and be knowledgeable in computer programming. McHenry did the work for us, officially creating what we know as the dot com, dot net, dot edu, and dot gov, allowing us to communicate through the internet. So when you really think about this family, all of our great, intelligent, beautiful, strong black folk, I want you to think about this. Yesterday, I told you about Marion Croak, who created voice over internet protocol or VoIP, as people know, which give us the ability to communicate with Teams and uh, a Cisco video, Google Meet, all these, you know, things that we do for our jobs for those people who work remotely. And then you have a brother like him who created the internet. And then there's another brother who's mixed. He created the search engine. But this information is not widely dispersed. Ron DeSantis, I don't see you put this in the books. I'm still trying to define what uh, critical race theory is. I'm still trying to define that bull crap. I'm still trying to de uh, uh, define what stop woke is. I mean, I'm really not. I know what it is. It's kind of stop black people sort of thing. But now you're erasing history, but no one knows about this history. No, no, one, no one knows about this history. You, you see what I'm saying? And I tell people, I'm not going to get it all to a fuss and an argument that they only are going to teach our kids Dr. Martin Luther King, by the way, if I have a dream speech and George Washington Carver the peanut man, we know that's the only thing they're going to teach them. It is our duty. And it's my honor to teach my kids, these intelligent people who damn near civilized the world who were the descendants of enslaved Africans. Oh my God. I love to teach my kid that dad, calm down, dad, calm down. My bad son. My bad son. My, I had my son, who's now 12 years old, sit through all of the hidden colors that Tariq Nasheed did. And he was just like astonished. Let's get into it. First on the list. CNN, the cable news network. Now, somebody told me of another skin tone that he thought CNN mean the coon negro, it's the other word, network. That's what he, <laughs> I'm just telling you what he said. No, I didn't punch him in the mouth, family. I reported him to the cops for a hate crime. We know where that went. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> CNN, and I, I wanted... We already know that CNN is a Democratic-ran, Democratic show organization. I'm not going to break that down so much. But I really wanted to show you guys how CNN is funded. Or, or who they're owned by, rather. Who they're owned by. We, we're going to get into the funding. You're going to see this. It's crazy. So CNN is owned by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. CNN is owned by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is owned by Disney. Okay, CNN is owned by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is owned by Disney, and Disney is owned by public companies and individual investors. And I'm going to show you those individual investors. I'm going to show you the companies that own these news media, Democratic boot-licking line of black people, and at the same time, showing black people in a negative light. And showing black people in a negative light. It's like slapping your face and kick you in the face. Or is it like slapping you in your face and rubbing you on your back? I don't know. But we're going to break it down, family. 
I was researching something earlier about all the money that Joe Biden has racked up, 97 million in the fourth quarter. Where does that money go after the election? And I was just looking at all Biden direction, additional 18 million to house. All these things that the information is spewed out through CNN. Next, MSNBC. Now, let me tell you, this was a crap shoot. I could not find really any information about MSNBC, but I know it's a Democratic red uh, uh, think tank organization to influence black people to stay Democratic and influence black people at the same time. Look at ourselves negatively. What's important about this organization? I think Lou Holtz, a black man, who is their leading anchor, right? I always look at his little clips. I think I think he's with MSNBC. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But what I noticed is that MSNBC continue to use black women as their scapegoats in talking to black people about voting Democrat. And then when they break you, when they break, um, when they break these black women, because that's how the system of white supremacy works, they break you. And then they get rid of you like Tiffany Cross. Tiffany Cross used to be part of MSNBC. Well, I'm still surprised. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are still surprised. How in the hell is Joy Reid still working for MSNBC? They're still, she's still doing her job. That's why she still works for MSNBC. Now, as promised, I want to show you these organizations. Give me, give me one second, family. Let me get up here. What am I doing? All right. ABC News is a branch of Walt Disney. ABC News. ABC News is a branch of Walt Disney. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna define who owns Walt Disney. All this is important. This is how you have to comb layers down to find out who's funding them the, the propaganda that's being projected towards black people because the money is coming from somewhere because it's all about money cbs news viacom doesn't viacom own bet wait a minute let, let me look that up maybe they got sold hold up let me look that up can i look let, i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait but i think viacom's own bet unless it was already sold again cnn part of warner media warner media is part of disney Disney is owned by public companies. Okay, Fox News, we know that's a Republican conservative brand. Then MSNBC and NBC, they just basically saying, which is owned by Comcast Corporation. Okay, and we can just comb that back. Who's Comcast owned by? Okay, and then here are all the people, the board members. I told you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you guys. Texas of Austin did a great publication here. Walt Disney Company Board of Directors. Here, here are the Board of Directors of Walt Disney, the Board of Directors of Viacom, okay? CNN, Board of Directors, by the way, of AT&T Board of Directors. It goes deep, family. Who owns AT&T? Who are the people part of AT&T, okay? It, 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 you got to keep combing. You'll get there. Everybody knows that Robert Murdoch, he also owns the New York Post. Excuse, yeah, the New York Post. So just understand that the New York Post is always going to go hard against Democrats, liberals, and independents. Always know that the New York Post as well as Fox News, okay? Then you have MSNBC and NBC, uh, Brian L. Roberts, Chairman Executive Officer. Let's keep going. Because the next on the list is the one that you've all been waiting for is Black lives matter now i went right to their page here family and blow this up for you guys what does this say black voters matter not only on election day but on the uh excuse me 364 days between election days as well this means we must support individuals and organizations that are striving to obtain social justice throughout the year and then it says blow uh black voters matter everywhere including rural counties and smaller cities yada 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 okay then that was their purpose that was their purpose and then i told you guys anytime anytime that you want to know about a company read about a company look at their mission statement look at their vision look at their policies because eventually 
the truth will reveal itself. It will. Oh, it will. So I went down here and I started to look at uh, policy advocacy. We advocate, listen, we advocate for policies, policies meaning state and federal, that's power, to expand voting rights access, including expanding earlier voting, re, uh, resisting voter ID, re-entry restoration of rights, and strengthening the Voting Rights Act. We advocate for policies that intersect with race, gender, economic, and other aspects of equity. Why didn't it say that we advocate policies to ensure that foundational black Americans have the right to vote? Why are we talking about it? Gender, economy, uh, race. Why are we saying all these other things? Why didn't we just call it for what it is? Why didn't we just call it for what it is? I'm just asking. Because the, the here's the thing. Increasing voter registration and turnout is an important aspect of building power, but the, this is the beginning of our work. Okay. So we know that they're pretty much not doing anything for anyone. Because what, what are they fighting for? Can someone tell me what voting rights are they fighting for? But let me move on. I want you guys to ponder that and throw that in the chat. Okay. They make over 30, they're, listen to this, Black Voters is funded by over $30 million. That $30 million is coming through 400 partners in 25 states. $30 million. What are they doing with $30 million to make sure that black folk have voting rights? So, so let's take for instance, right? Let's say Black Voters Matters, an organization filled with 20 people. And those 20 people, they're mostly lawyers and they're writing legislation, they're writing acts, they're writing bills, they're writing rough draft speeches, whatever, to present to Congress, to a legislator of sorts, a lawmaker of sorts, in order to get them passed so we ensure that black people have voting rights. So, because you can't, I mean, you might have some people to advocate, some lobbyists, so let's up it to 30 people, I don't know. So, is those 30 people receiving $1 million per year for that work? I'll take that job. I don't have a lawyer degree, but I'm, I'm a good writer. I'm definitely a good writer family. I promise you. I'll take that job. I write better than I speak. I promise you. I'll take that job. So who's getting all this money? Who are the people? Everybody else are volunteers in Black Voters Matter. They're handing out t-shirts. They're getting 30 million. And then any money that they spend, <laughs> now they got the money by charity. Any money that they spend, guess what they're going to do? It's a tax write-off. So the federal government is going to end up giving them money. Now here's the thing. First thing I saw when I researched this, who do you guys see up here as one of the people that give them money? The NAACP. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, family. You can't make this up. They throw this information right in our face because they know that black people won't go and look it up. How's the NAACP getting funded? I don't know. Democratic ran organizations by those special interest groups, okay? And then what was funny, if you come down, we talked about the National Urban League yesterday, but if you come down, it says AME churches. <laughs> look at your neighbor and say he's a meat stretcher. He'll stretch your meat. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Every time I see churches, I'm just thinking about, I would if I was swallowed up. And then I think about the meat stretcher. Don't ask me why. I have none against the black church family. I have none against the black church. Now let's talk about these voting rights, okay? Let's talk about these voting rights. I told you that we've had uh, the right to vote for a very long time and that the black uh, voting matters organizations, a do nothing democratic bootlicking organization that's just getting paid and fronting as though if black people don't have voting rights. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 is a landmark federal law that prohibits racial discrimination in voting. It was enacted on August 6, 1965. 1965, family. I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of these organizations continue to tell us that. Oh, well, you know, if you put in a voter ID law, that's discriminatory against black folk. 
But we got all these organizations out here. CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, mainstream media outlets that parade themselves like they're helping black folk. Oh, Biden, he's doing the most for black people. They also champion themselves as organizations that are for diversity and inclusion when it comes to black folk. But when I look at DEI, it hasn't been beneficial for black folk either. Yeah, initially, when they initially did DEI, we all saw an uptick in black employment and a decrease in black unemployment. Then they started to outsource all the tech, all the call, all the jobs to Asia, to Mexico, to Venezuela, then Honduras. But they said, you know what? We're just going to come over. You don't got to outsource it. We just come over here. Now they're here. Now they're here. And these media organizations, family, they study black folk. That's why they know how to speak to us. That is why they know how to convince us to go vote in Democrat. They manipulate our own narratives. They cherry pick our voices. They cherry pick our voices. They do. And they serve us watered down propaganda under the guise of representation by the way of the Democratic Party and black faces in white spaces. Because when we talk about when we talk about legislation, these organizations and media outlets came to fight for our rights and they conveniently ignore the fact that immigrants, that immigrants, please, this is not to be divisive. This is not to be divisive. They ignore the fact that immigrants, both legal and illegal, often receive preferential treatment over native black Americans foundational black Americans. We look at the sanctuary cities, for example. Look at the sanctuary cities, for example. They prioritize shielding illegal immigrants from, deport, uh, from deportation over addressing systematic issues plaguing black communities. And now, hold on. I hear you, family, in the comments. They're plaguing American community. Now it's a problem. And don't even get me started about affirmative action. Oh, well, we never benefited from it anyway. While it was initially intended to uplift black people, it's been hijacked to benefit all the other minority groups, including immigrants who haven't faced the same historical injustices as we have. Did you guys know uh, in 2020, the federal government allocated over $180 billion and aid to immigrants. Did, did you guys know that? While black communities continue to struggle with inadequate funding for education, healthcare, infrastructure, you name it, clean drinking water, it's a slap in the face over and over and over. And it's almost like they're telling us black people wake up, black people wake up, and we're not waking up because we're like, we got to go out there and vote because of Donald Trump getting office. That's democracy as we know it. We survived four years of Donald Trump family. And if Donald Trump wins again, and I listen, I'm not telling you to go vote for Donald Trump. I got to say that as a disclaimer, every broadcast, because I got new eyeballs and they, well, you uh, sound like you want to vote for Donald Trump. Listen, vote for who you want to vote for. Hashtag vote couch 2024. That's your boy. That's who I'm voting for, the couch. It's a comfortable couch. It's a comfortable couch. My wife got it from Nebraska Mart, I believe, it was, or Macy's or somewhere. It's a very comfortable couch. I like it. I fall asleep of it every now and again. <laughs> but 108, 180 billion family to aid immigrants over our communities. And they'll talk about, you know, criminal justice reform like it's just for black people. See, in the media, they uh, sensationalize cases of police brutality all the time. They conveniently ignore that the Democratic politicians, listen, that the Democratic politicians whom they endorse without question, see how the media does? They sensationalize police brutality of our black people getting killed and we getting all charged up and riled up. We're getting all charged up and riled up. And then they 
fund the very same democratic politicians without question who have failed to enact meaningf meaningful reform, actual legislation to assist black folk, black folk being a protected class. So when people harm us and call us the N word or something that is racially motivated, it's a federal hate crime. They will rather exploit our pain for ratings than hold those in power accountable. They would rather exploit our pain than to hold those in power accountable. I want you to think about that. We see how our black people get brutalized by race soldiers with and without badges. Those who operate in the system of white supremacy, brutalized, killed, tortured. They play it over and over and over again until you get desynthesized but you know something has to change so that motivates you and props you up for you to go out and vote who? But here's a kicker. They expect us to keep voting blue without question. They take our loyalty for granted, assuming that we will blindly support them no matter what. Well, I know we got news for them this time. Those days of being taken advantage of family are over. And someone wrote that every generation blames the last generation for the issues their generations have. I thought about it. I forgot. We may go over some of my comments here too in a minute here, but I read your comments and I was like, I don't think that's true. I don't think that we blame Nat Turner. I don't think that we blame Martin Luther King. I don't think we blame Malcolm X. I don't believe we blame the Black Panther Party. I don't think we blame the Black Liberation Army. I don't think we blame those folks. We're blaming the civil rights generation of today that are still alive and kicking that are the, that are the democratic shields and puppets for the people in power currently. And granted, as I said it before, I understand that not all my baby boomers, not all those people from the civil rights era are bootlickers. Okay, some of you are on code, but there's a lot off code. Let me tell you that. But we deserve, here's the thing, family. We deserve grassroots politicians who truly have our best interests at heart, not just during election season, but every single day. We deserve positive, okay, not just negative, media representation that reflects the full spectrum of our experience, not just the ones that fit their agenda. That's where I'm at, family. That's where I'm at. So, um, you know that this is the going story every single time that they want to break down what's wrong with voter ID laws, okay? And down here it states that, down here it states, the negative impact of strict voter ID laws is not limited to black Americans. Other marginalized populations also face disproportionate barriers to voting because of these laws. Native American communities, low income early and rural voters are dis disproportionately affected by voter photo ID laws. Okay, um, and then it says this is partially because photo IDs aren't as common as many people assume. What? Let me read it again. This is partially because this is partially because photo IDs aren't as common as many people assume. Oh hell no. Um well, and then it goes on to state that 18% of, of all citizens over the age of 65, 16% Latino voters, 25% of black voters, and 50% of low-income Americans lack acceptable photo ID. So let me ask you something. If, if we have all these people who don't have adequate IDs, then how are people driving around? How are people getting access to uh, work? I mean, all sorts of things, family. The only thing you need is a state ID. 
only thing you need is a state ID. I don't know what they're talking about. There's black Americans have IDs. We either have a driver's license or a non-driver's license, a social security card, um, uh, uh, your, your, your concealed handgun license, your, your contractor's ID. We have all sorts of photo identification to tell who we are. That can be traced back to a, a verifiable source to say this is true. This is who he is. Who the hell they're talking about? You're twenty five percent of black voters. Where are they from? What are these black voters from? Are they foundational black Americans or are they or they are immigrants? What are you talking about? Who you talking about, Willis? And fifty percent of low income Americans lack acceptable photo ID. These are lies. These are lies. Now I stated this before. Their voter IDs may be expired. Their photo IDs may be expired, but if they're on Social Security family, this this country is not just a um a, a, a what you call it a a, a capital a, a capital uh, I'm a loss for words here a capital society. We have some socialist laws, family. That's called welfare. That's called EBT. That's called TAB, that's called CHIP, that's called SSI, Social Security. Family, they have money to go get their IDs renewed. So this is, these, these do nothing, or, do nothing organizations like Black Voters Matter, they use titles, labels like this. Now, Elon Musk came out and said something, he said, uh, he claims that Biden allowing migrant surge to pack dim voter rolls, importing as many votes as possible. Now, I know you've been hearing people in the black media say this for a long time. I had a news clipping up. I think it was, I don't know, family, maybe four or five videos back. Please, I just don't recall. But I had the video clip up of a district in California that allowed illegal immigrants without identification to vote for Biden. I'm not making this up. You, you just have to come through some of my last five or six videos. <laughs> but nonetheless, I pointed this out. And now it's being brought up again, by the way, of Elon Musk. Now, I don't have no love for Elon Musk, but when, when you speak the truth, I got to listen. Okay, when you speak the truth, I got to listen. So we're going to go over here, and this guy right here is going to break how... They're really about to allow non-citizens in California to vote on a local level. Okay. This is crazy, family. This is crazy. They're going to allow illegal immigrants, non-citizens non to vote in Santa Ana. This is crazy. City Council is once again considering an amendment to the city's charter that would allow non-citizens the right to vote in local elections. KTLA 5's Orange County Bureau Chief Chip Yost, live now in Santa Ana with more. Chip? Yeah, hello there, guys. Yeah, tonight on the city, on the agenda of tonight's city council meeting in Santa Ana, there is a discussion item where two council members are asking for city staff to come back with some sort of measure or wording they can put on the ballot next year, possibly to allow non citizens to vote in the city of Santa Ana in municipal elections, including city council. We don't need to watch no more of that family. We don't need to watch no more of that. We we get it. We get it. We get it. But they telling black folk that we were crazy when we were saying that they're gonna start allowing illegal immigrants to vote. And like I said before, I pointed out a district in California where they were allowed, they, they didn't have to present ID. And then I told you about that 25% that they took, they were illegal immigrants. The whole batch of them. And it's all over the internet. New California policy, illegal immigrants voting. California proposed a new law to allow illegals to vote. Okay, what you need to know, vote in California's primary election. They got stuff. Oh, show. Okay, blah, blah, blah. It's so much information, family. Now, into your comments. Into your comments. Now, immigration since 2020 and handouts from the government is not a black racist thing it harms everyone they say it harms everyone family it does it does it does harm everyone it does harm everyone and Catherine Mahone it does harm everybody 
But what people are not understanding when black people speak out, it harms black folk the most. That's what we're saying. See, anytime we're speaking about these very systemic issues that disproportionately and predominantly affects black folk, I've never said, and we will never say, that it don't affect white people, that it don't affect Hispanic people, that it don't affect Asian people. It just affects us more than everybody else. And if I had to give it a percentage number, I would say 85%. And then everybody else can have the other 15%. That's the one I wanted to point it out. That's the one. That's the one I wanted to point out. And then we got, we got some other business to handle as well. We got some other business to handle as well, because as I told you before, non-citizens, right? That's what they, that's, a, that's what they're calling them. That's what they're calling these people, non-citizens. But now they have a new term undocumented America. The negotiation didn't have a path to citizenship. It was entirely on their terms in order to get Ukraine funding, right? Well, I mean, Chris, that's been a failed play for 20 years. So right. you are right that that has been the Democratic strategy for 30 years, maybe. Uh, and it has failed to deliver for the people we care about most, the undocumented Americans that are in this country. This is also not 2013 any longer when we ran that play last. The negotiation didn't have a. So I don't know if you guys are aware of that new undocumented American piece that listen, family, that blew my rocker. That blew my mind. It, it is. I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't have a comeback. Undocumented American. They are already American. And last and lastly, I told my wife we wouldn't be long tonight. <laughs> she knew I was lying. I don't know. Why. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about it. Oh, yeah, we got to get on your girl. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we do. I'm just going to start it off. Uh, posted on his IG page, on his Instagram, uh, this post, which talks about a $53 million program that the current mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, is launching to hand out prepaid debit cards to migrant families in New York. And he's quoting this New York Post article, the Rupert Murdoch owned New York Post. Have to always throw that in, same people on Fox News quoting this article um, about that program. Okay, so let's talk about it. Now, in the comments on 50's um, post, there are lots of people going off saying, you know, why are we sending the, giving this money to migrants when we're not giving that money to Americans? Lots and lots and lots of pro-Trump argo bargo because of course, 50 ends his rant about it by saying maybe Trump is the answer. Hmm. Really? Okay, let's start out by talking about the program itself. Here is an article that tells you factually what this program is about. Let me read a little bit of it to you. Youths of these prepaid debit cards will only be permitted at bodegas, grocery stores, supermarkets, and convenience stores with participating families required to sign an affidavit swearing to use the cards for food and baby supplies or risk being booted from the program, according to the Post, which compared it to the state. You know what, Joy Reid? You're a big fat dummy. She's a big fat dummy. Talking about they got to sign an affidavit so they will only spend the money at this place. Uh, are you freaking kidding me, woman? She's an absolute fool. That's what I'm saying. I, I, how are these people getting these degrees in journalism? I have no idea. Are you stupid? They got to sign an affidavit swearing to use the cars for food and baby food. If I got money, I'm going to spend the money on whatever I can spend the money on. What are they talking about? What are they talking about? Wow. State's food stamp program known as SNAP. So again, the cards are like the SNAP cards that Americans also use in New York City. And now here's an important thing that you have to recognize. And this is a little bit more in the article. Not only will this provide families with the ability to purchase fresh food for their culturally relevant diets and the babies and the baby supplies of their choosing, but the pilot program is also expected to save New York City more than $600,000 per month or more than $7.2 million 
annually. Why? Because New York City is already paying to feed these migrants who are in New York City shelters. They have a fiduciary duty to not let them starve to death. So they're already... Oh, oh, oh. what you mean a, for, a, for, a fiduciary duty? No, the duty is to send them home. That's the humane thing to do. They are not asylum seekers. They're not refugees. They're not fearing political persecution from their home countries. This is the economic migration. And if you doesn't, if you don't think it hurts America, it does. Now, why do you think news organizations like MSNBC, CNN, all these Democratic places, why do you think, and you got to stay with me here, family, why do you think that they want them in a country? Why do you think they want them in the country, family? Let me tell you why. A lot of, I showed you a whole list of who owns these news organizations. Okay, I should have linked or who fund these new organizations as far as own them as well, you will start to see all these big Fortune 500, uh, Fortune 500 companies that fund this money to the news media because these are the ones who are using the low-skill labor at 4 or $5, a fraction or a third of the amount that the American, they will have to pay due to state laws. It, again, this boils down to the deepest level of money. This is about money. Why would she even say this that, oh, it's causing New York City this amount of money? Then send them home. You don't have to feed them. You don't have to shelter them. Just send them home. Then secure the border. Then you don't have to take care of people who are not your own. You, you see what I'm saying? Th that's why you have to trace where the money, you always got to follow the money. Always follow the money. Because you're like, well, wouldn't businessmen want Trump in office so they can get better tax breaks? Well, if I'm only paying someone, I should be paying someone $15 and I'm paying them $5 because they're illegally in the country, then who cares about the tax? I'm going to say billions of dollars in low-skill labor. That's why all these big and four, five, uh, Fortune 500 companies fund these Democratic, liberal, conservative, independent organizations. It's crazy. They're not smart. They're just devious. Already paying. Here's how much they're paying. According to City Hall, the savings are comparatively based on the current $11 per meal that the city is currently spending. The Post reported that a family of four could be provided nearly a thousand. What I was saying is the sister up here stated, what about the homeless people that can't buy fresh food for their families? Are you really failing? Okay. Are you really failing? Are you really falling for this? And, sh and she has a really good point about all the homeless people. And not just black people are homeless, white people are homeless, Asian people are homeless, Hispanic people legally in the country are homeless. Because you wouldn't go outside your city, outside your state, outside your country to grab someone and help them. You would want to help your own countrymen first. You will want to help your own countrymen first, would you not? Because here's, here's what people are stating. It's wrong, period, when you have Americans that are being told that you don't qualify for assistance. Trump isn't the answer to anything, still voting for Trump. Why are so many against helping others? No, 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 no. People, no, Americans are not against helping others. We're just stating why are our citizens being neglected? Why can't we help them first? If we have American citizens who are homeless, if we have American citizens who are unemployed, if we have American citizens who are unsheltered, why are all this money being provided for people who are illegally in the country? And I told you before. I told you before. Brandon said, hold your spit. <laughs> and then you got this person here. That's how you handle that. Joy is a queen and love the way you didn't bash Fiddy. Sometimes we just need a little more information to consider. Consider what? Giving a country away in a handbasket and a bow tie? Listen, listen. When the times I travel to Africa, Africa countries have two to three official languages, right? They will have a European language like English or French and then the one country that speaks Spanish 
and Portuguese, right? You'll have those main European languages in one in one of these African countries as their official language. For a very long time, America's official language has been English. It soon will be English and Spanish. And I'm going to tell you right now, family, as Joe Biden would say that the future of America, okay, that the future of America is Hispanic folk. Vice President Biden, do you support reparations? Look, let me, since I haven't spoken on this, got a chance. Um, number one, the reason we're the country we are is because of immigration. I take people at their word, family. I take people at their word. I got a question. Why don't they explain it on TV the way you just did for us who don't understand? Whoever Supreme is, he still don't understand. See, they're looking at this one-sided. They're not thinking about all the homeless New Yorkers that are out there. I'm just stating. dollars each month, each month, which comes out to just $35 per day for food. But they'd be buying food that they want not food that's provided in the shelter. Let me explain why that is important. Food waste. Food waste has been a major problem at migrant, at migrant shelter city with new arrivals coming from countries around the globe wanting culturally familiar food. More than 170,000 migrants have made their way to the five. I know you guys heard it. I know you guys heard that. I know you guys heard that. I know you guys heard what she just said. I know you guys heard what she just said. I don't know what just happened to my camera. I know you guys just heard what she said, family. She said culturally appropriated food. Like they should be eating food from their native country. That's basically what she was saying. That's basically what she was saying, family. It's crazy to me. Oh, we should give them money so they don't throw away the food and they can eat food from their home country. And this is why it's important to send them home because one, they're in the country illegally, not because they are Haitian, not because they are Hispanic, not because they're Chinese, not because they're Indian, not because they are any ethnic at any or any race. It's because they are in the country illegally. It is because they are in the country illegally. We got Jermaine Anderson in the room, Jay the Informant, Brenda 33, Stay Woke, Extreme X, Coach, Rhonda Smith, DT Pointer. Hey, DT Pointer, shout out goes to you, brother. I did receive your donation. I did receive your donation on Cash Shop. I appreciate that, DT Pointer. Uh, we got Kelly Goodman, uh, Brother Pupil, Brandon. Who else we got in the room? Maurice Clark, Kelly Goodman. I'm hoping. That was a bot. Now people have to learn Spanish to get a job. Send them, send them home. They can all eat their culturally food they want. Good point. Good point, Kelly. Let's see if this uh, camera fixed itself. There we go. I'm gonna start being like Tariq. Boom. There I am. <laughs> Every time we do it, I start laughing. I'm like, <laughs> boom. There I am, family. Here I am. I'm here. <laughs> I'm just joking, family. I'm just joking. That's that's how one of our master teachers living living present day. But here's another thing I wanted to point out to you guys too about this uh, illegal immigration thing. Okay, this illegal immigration thing um, is is much bigger than what the two sides are fighting about. Especially not only for the country and all American citizens, but, but especially um, for Black people because. Initially, they dropped them off in our neighborhoods and our communities and robbing us of those of those resources that we barely even received in the first place. It calls upon a city mayor that made me think about this. I forgot the lady's name, but she's a black city mayor up in Illinois, and she has been reported on for spending the state funds lavishly flying first class, doing all sorts of dinner. The average income of a resident of that district is $24,000. But in seven months, she spent $24,000 in eating out with when in, in inviting people to eat out with her as well. And these first class flights, she's been going to Atlanta and all these other popular places. 
and she she dressed down to the T. I wish I I wish I had the information up here for you guys, but it, it tells me that when it comes to illegal immigration and the people who are spewing this rhetoric and really putting it out there, you you really have to boil this down to one thing, and it's about money. I hate to say it. I hate to say it because it, a lot of people like money isn't everything. Well, that is how they're treating your vote. That's how they treat your vote because they they are still believing that majority of black Americans, foundational black Americans, are going to go out and vote Democrat because they got Jim Clyburn, uh, J uh, Jim uh, Fresh Flying Clyburn out here with Joe Biden going to these black churches. They're going to go to these black areas and speak to black folk and say, "Well, you know, you don't want Trump in office." Well, Joe Biden, are you going to sign into cash payment reparations? Are you going to at least do the do nothing bills that you presented while you was in office, like the Emmett Tip, Emmett Timmett bill, as well as the uh, George Floyd Policing Act? Are you going to sign any of those? Are you going to get those passed? Are you going to put that up on uh, uh, executive order? Are you going to do anything of the sort? That's the question that I have. Is he going to do anything of the sort? So, family, when people will tell you, well, they have the electoral college and they have this thing. And your vote and your vote is really not that important. Then why is it? Ask yourself, why is it they spend so much time trying to get it? Trying to get it. Why they spend so much time trying to get it? And coach said, and I voted sticker. No, not just the sticker, brother. The button, the metal button. I voted. So when they tell you these do nothing organizations are really doing something because the Republicans or conservatives or the independents or special interest, uh, special interest groups are trying to prevent black folk from voting to keep democracy in place. Then I want you to ask them a very simple question. What are you going to do for foundational black Americans? If I were to give you my vote. What about the uh, what about uh, uh, President Trump getting off of democracy? The country won't be here. What are you going to do for foundational black America? What are you going to do for me and my family? How are you going to empower black folks? You empower the illegal immigrants, did you not? Billions of dollars are going to them. All the, the public assistance and all the uh, you name it, credit cards now, you name it, they're getting it. All the social programs that Everyday Americans have to file and apply for and get denied. You're now just giving that away. So what are you going to do for me? And see, I expect every group of people to do that. Not just black folk, white people. You should be asking Joe Biden, what are you going to do for you? Or Donald Trump, what are you going to do for you? But you probably already know. I mean, Asian folk, you should be asking Joe Biden, Donald Trump, what are they going to do for you? Oh, you already know because he's already signed a crime bill for Asians. You see what I'm saying? So all these other people, family, they know what these Democrats and Republicans are doing for them. But see, then they try to uh, disguise under the guise of these very bar, these very broad and full spectrum words like criminal justice reform. And then you automatically think, oh, that gotta be for black folk. Uh, Medicaid assistance. Oh, that gotta be for black folk. Healthcare disparities. Oh, that that got to be for black folk. Just like uh, they reduced the price of insulin. Didn't they re reduce the price of insulin or aspirin? I don't know. But then they said that was for black folk. Then they had counseling student debt. So the question is, if counseling student debt was supposedly for black folk, did any white people get their debt canceled? Yes. Did any Asian people get their debt canceled? Yes. Did any Hispanic people, legal, uh, get their... Uh, Student debt council? Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So that wasn't for black folk. And neither, and it shouldn't be. If you're going to counsel student debt, it should be for everybody. That's why I'm not asking for the Democrats to uh, cancel student debt. The city girl mayor, yeah. And family, I'm going to leave you with this. The reason why I'm not asking any particular party to cancel student debt because that would not enrich the lives of all foundation black Americans but 
I know it will. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen, again. Anytime somebody is thought of will look, listen, you know they ain't giving up no damn reparations, okay? It has to start off a little more with substance. At the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps and this is what we are faced with and this is the reality now when we come to washington in this campaign we are coming to get our check Not voting Democrat, not voting Republican. I'm voting couch 